Hey, hey there. Greetings from sunny San Jose, California. Today is part two, practical intuition. How to activate and focus your intuition and a preview of a very special guest that I'll be interviewing tomorrow. Let me see who's on. Let me put my glasses. Nobody yet. Well, you'll be watching the recording. It's great to be here. This is Ken Kasher, the author, founder of the Trust Your Intuition Academy, as well as the international train director and lead instructor for the Silver Method of Mind Development. It's great to be here and this wonderful, beautiful day. And actually, I'm here in San Jose visiting my son, his wife, and our new grandchild. And I'm actually doing a little babysitting. So I'm just sneaking a couple of minutes here to say hello, say hi to you guys. Let me see who's saying in. Let me say hi. Ina and Marek, howdy. Glad you joined. And Mary, hey again. And Bob. Hello, hello. Oh, thank you for sharing, Marek. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I think there's a way to put some thumbs up or some hearts. If you feel impressed to do that, if you'd like to, that'd be nice. I'd like to see that, know that you're interacting. That'd be great. So, guys, I'm going to take off my glasses for a moment. My vanity. And like I said, this is Practical Intuition Part 2. And we're exploring the 12 focusing principles that are necessary, helpful, to help you activate and focus your intuition. And in part one, we talked about the importance of relaxation through meditation, through going for a walk, how taking the pressure off can often free us up to allow inspiration ideas. Then we looked at a second principle, and that is having your big why, a clear vision, clear you know, intent, why is it important to you? You know, it's easy to get caught up in a spiritual soup. There's so much information out there. There's so much guided, you know, info. And it's just really important to have a focus. Why? It'll help you tune in. And then third, we talked about deliberate practice. And I want to build on that today. In fact, let me just remind you a couple of those points. And I took some notes here, and I just want to go over with you. This is Ken. Let me just take a quick peek here for you. I'm so caught up watching the baby that... Uh, hey, Barb and Van Ness. Hey! Yeah, we all have to relax, Van Ness. I agree. I'm with you. But I tell you, my grandson, he's just seven months. He's so adorable, and it's such a joy. Um, his spirit. You know, one of the things uh, we talk about relaxation. And the third focusing principle, which slipped my mind, I admit, was being playful. And children, that young spirit in children, they're so alive, they're, they're so genuine, they're so, oh, it's just hard to describe. I mean, I wish they'd stay that way, right? And it's interesting how so many spiritual leaders have told us the secret to entering the kingdom of heaven, the secret to enlightenment, the secret to finding your bliss is become like a child. My interpretation of that is be playful, especially when it comes to intuition. Because if we get too into our head, too logical, not that that's bad, we need logic, we need reasoning, we need rational thinking, of course, it's essential. However, when it comes to activating intuition, it's not a rational process. It makes no sense logically at all. And often we feel like we're making it up. So I know that, for example, if you've been in the silver life, excuse me, <clears throat> if you've been in the silver life system with me, silver intuition system, in the four-day immersion experience that I do in Chicago and Boston and Connecticut, it's great fun. I hope one day to meet you. If you haven't been in, and if you have, come on back and say hello. It's wonderful. We spent four solid days working with this. So to me, I look at it, let's play a game, and we're constantly playing games in the class. And I find that when we play a game, people are more relaxed. They're more likely to have an insight. So those are the three. Relaxation. Have a good, clear intention and be playful. What I want to just mention briefly today is the importance of practice. Now, by the way, last time I wrote out some notes. 
and I put them like this and they appeared backwards, right? So some people made a suggestion to me. They said, hey, Ken, write them backwards. So I did. And I have no idea. And I did it. <laughs> and it's still backwards. This is like my third time doing Facebook Live. I'm not sure what's going on. If you know, you can help me. Please let me know message for that. Uh, but anyway, practice. And then next one, applications. Applications. It's important that we apply it. I mean, what good is it to have a gut feeling if we don't do something with it, if we don't trust it? What good is it to be intuitive, to have insight, to have wisdom, to have ideas, synchronicities, if we don't trust them, right? So practice helps us to build confidence because it's with practice that we begin to discern the difference between when we're making it up, you know, wishful thinking, or when it's really a bone, hey, I see some heart, thanks, some thumbs up, thanks, keep them coming. Let's see who else is there. Let me just pause for a moment. Olga and Lisa... My niece, Lisa, baby. Actually, my niece, Lisa Malloy Monks, she's actually famous. Her son, Mark, my great nephew, is a quarterback at Assumption College. This kid is good. He's only a junior. They're winning game after game. Such a joy to watch him, and I hope to make a game in my schedule fit time to get in and see him. But anyway, I did. and by the way, I mentioned him because when I watch him play, he has a sense of where his teammates are. He's almost intuitive. He's anticipating where his running backs, where his receivers are going to be. So cool to watch. And when he's on, when there's a synchronicity with the players, boy, it's like magic. So it could be in sports. It could be you watch famous basketball players. I remember in, in my day watching the Boston Celtics, Larry Bird was notorious for anticipating where his teammates were going to be. He just kind of was ahead of the ball. It was so incredible. That's why he was so great. Uncanny to watch him. It could be in business. Trendsetters, innovators, entrepreneurs often have an anticipation of trends before anybody else. And they get a heads up. They get a lead on it. And they get the competitive edge. Just see who else is here. At least I didn't see anybody else. I just wanted to say hello, make sure I acknowledge you. I'm dropping my papers. I don't need them anyway because they're not showing up properly. Anyway, guys, practice. How do you know the difference between intuition or wishful thinking or fear-based thinking? So keep this in mind. Practice and applications. So I want you to think about a little assignment. Is what are some of the things that are important to you with your intuition? What are some of the synchronicities you've had? Some of those meaningful coincidences that you know you just kind of look up and say, "Gee, I think somebody's watching out for me." But depending on what your spiritual background is, what your religious persuasion is, or what your thinking is on that, there's something about that, isn't that? When we're in alignment with our purpose, when we're in alignment with our sense of mission, when we're in alignment with our work, with our intention. It does seem like the universe has got our back, doesn't it? Maybe not always, but my intention is, in the Trust Your Intuition Academy, is to help you be more and more in alignment. So I've got lots of cool offerings, lots of programs. I should just start. I shouldn't say that just two, but I've got lots in the fire, lots I want to work on getting to, in addition to the silver program that I've been doing now for 45 years. For those of you who don't know my story, I've been doing this since 1971. I was the youngest instructor for the Silver Method in the world. I started when I was 20. I'm now 65, a week from Saturday. I'm now officially a senior citizen. I get senior discount, and I'm now officially on Medicare. I never thought I'd get to that point, but I am, and I love it. But anyway, now I'm the oldest, not in age, but in, in experience. And I've been so blessed, so fortunate in my life to have people like you in my life. Thank you. Because there's people like you who inspired me to continue your applications, your insights, your the, how you've turned your life and transformed your life. And I think it's just so cool and just such a blessing and an honor for me to facilitate these life-transforming experiences. And if you have yet to be through the Silver Program with me, I hope one day you will make the time. This is your life. It's a great investment in your life. I know I did, Virg, but I have an announcement. 
tomorrow. I have a special guest. And let me see who else is here. Oh. I just see a few comments. Nobody else, but you'll see the, the replay. Just making sure I wanted to keep track. Tomorrow, I will be interviewing briefly. We're going to do a Facebook Live in the afternoon. I'm at California time, so on the East Coast, it'll be around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, maybe this time. Depends when the baby is napping. So he was just out here. We are just playing, and he, he's taking a rest. So I jumped in. I'm watching. I'm in charge. So I squeaked out. My guest tomorrow is none other than Ronnie Joy Krasner. She is known as the Midlife Dating Coach. She happens to be a dear friend. She used to work with me in the SOVA program back in Connecticut. She was on my staff, on my team. She's now living here in California, in Oakland. She's evolved into an incredible coach. And her specialty is midlife dating. Pretty cool, huh? Not for me, because I'm married now 38 years with Barbara. We're in our, what, 42nd year since 72, the fall. But anyway, Ronnie's going to be here visiting with us tomorrow, and I asked her, I said, could you take a few extra minutes, and let's just talk about some synchronicities and how you use your intuition helping your clients. She's a really very intuitive woman, and years I've known her, and I think you'll benefit and profit. So you want to be here, be sure to tune in or look for the, for the um, recording, because this stays there, and I'll share it. And thank you guys so much for your sharing. Thank you for being here. And I sincerely hope you're finding these things helpful. I think this is so cool, these new technologies that we can use to connect better. Because I know it's not always possible to, you know, to attend live. It's the best way to go. It really is. But it's not always possible. I understand. So check it out. TrustYourIntuitionAcademy.com. I am excited about that. It is so cool. It is an incredible platform that the people like Kajabi have put together and even me with minimum tech skills are beginning to utilize to begin to make offerings and we can make them at a fraction of the cost when you're buying DVDs and CDs. I can offer you so many other downloadable bonuses and cool stuff to help you in your transformation, in your inner work and helping you to trust and apply your intuition. So check it out trustyourintuitionacademy.com and yeah Ben Ness I hope to see you too one time and Saeed hey just shared my video thank you so much I appreciate it any of you thanks for sharing it let's get the word out there you know whether people go to the website or otherwise you know we got a lot of work to do together we got a lot of things there's just too much challenge out there I don't know about you, but I'm not happy with what's going on in the world. I just came back from Lithuania and Poland. It was a great trip. Again, I'm very blessed and fortunate to do this stuff. But man, there's just too much tension out there. There's too much struggle. And in my humble opinion, when we have skills, the right training, when we have support, when we're surrounded by people who can help us, we can minimize the struggle. It doesn't have to be that. Let's help each other. Let's do our best. So I'm going to say so long for now and I'm going to look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So guys, thanks again for being here. You've been wonderful. And let me just say this is Ken Kasha signing off for now. <laughs>